each year at the spring congregational meeting, our members vote for 10 recipients for Share the Plate. This month's Share the Plate recipient is Ch the Child Advocacy Center, and we have Destiny Burkett here with us to share more about their work. Welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself and um, tell us a little bit more about the Child Advocacy Center? Sure. Uh, so, as Jean said, my name is Destiny Burkett. I am the Development Director at the Child Advocacy Center. Um, I have been in that role for nearly three years. Um, the Child Advocacy Center, we are a nonprofit, and what we do is we provide services to child victims of abuse and neglect across 17 counties in Southeast Nebraska. So our main office is in Lincoln, but we do have two satellite offices in both York and Auburn. And that is um, so that we are easier to, it's easier for our families to reach us um, that are living in those rural areas. So they don't have to travel so far and so that it's more convenient for them. Um, and that way we're removing any barriers for them to get the access to the services that they need. Great. Do you wanna um, tell us a little bit more about the mission and vision? I will. Yes. So we are what is called a multidisciplinary team. We work with um, law enforcement, county attorneys, health and human services, and both medical and mental health professionals in order to provide a, um, just a, a, a group of people that are all working together to address the needs of these children and their families and make sure that they have everything they need in order to heal and also to help support the investigation. And so our main goals are to reduce trauma, um, provide again, the support to these families and foster hope and healing to them so that they can continue to move on past um, what has happened. Great. Um, I guess one of the questions I have is what would be, um, the first step for someone if they encountered uh, child abuse or neglect, what would be the step that they would take to contact? Well, we um, we provide services to actually children from age of zero to 18. Um, so we'll do any like exams, medical exams, or see children at any age in that range. Um, but our interview process, which is really the key to um, collecting evidence for these investigations, that is children ages three to 18. And so what happens is if someone is either, someone discloses to an adult or another person, or if you suspect child abuse, um, it needs to be reported first, either to law enforcement or to the um, child abuse and neglect hotline. And so there is a number um, that you would call in order to make that report. And then from there, they'll determine if that needs to come to the CAC. And if those families need to come to us and if we need to do an interview, an exam, or, or any of those services. Um, I guess one of the questions that I have also is just, um, you know, this has been a really strange year for all of us, and I'm curious what were the particular challenges that you faced with not, um, with, with having limitations for meeting people in person? Well, um, first I'll just mention that, that although the majority of the cases we see are for sexual abuse, we do see a variety of um, different things, and those are the, would be the reasons that kids would come to see us. So um, under state statute, we will see children that um, either are suffering from physical abuse or sexual abuse, severe neglect, uh, potentially could be victims of kidnapping or sex trafficking. Um, they may have been a witness to a violent crime, um, like a murder or domestic violence, or they are living in a drug-endangered environment. So for any of those reasons, and maybe most times it's multiple of those reasons, um, kids will come in and see us. And so really what we've seen during this time with the pandemic, um, we generally average about 100 kids a month that we see at the center. And initially when things were shutting down, when there was the social distancing implemented, um, when businesses were closing and schools were out, we saw a drastic decrease in those numbers. We, we dropped down to maybe a quarter of that a month and, and sometimes less. Um, and although at first glance, that might seem like a good thing, we knew that it was, it was truly because these kids didn't have access to the trusted adults that they needed. Um, teachers are our number one reporters. And so when they weren't in the presence of those kids each day, being able to keep an eye on them, monitor them, see how they were doing, um, 
they didn't have the ability to make those reports. And so we also know that approximately 70% of the kids that we see, um, they, they disclose to us that the abuse is happening in their home. And so again, that lets us know that it's not that the abuse was, was stopped and it wasn't happening. It was that they just couldn't tell anyone. And so um, the other thing we've seen is that with all the stressors of the pandemic, with all of the things that are happening, the uncertainty, um, people losing their jobs, fear of just the virus itself, the severity of the cases that we were seeing, the severity of the abuse, it had, it had increased and it had gotten worse. And so we're just really, we were really concerned with the safety of these kids, um, their ability to seek out someone that could help them and protect them, um, being able to reach them. Um, you know, so we didn't close, we, we stayed open throughout the time um, that most businesses were not allowed to keep their doors open and, and people were socially distancing, but we are an essential service. We are essentially the first responders for child abuse. And mm -hmm. so we did everything we could. We changed our protocols. We increased our safety um, precautions and, and did everything we could to make sure that we could still be there for those kids when they needed us. And so- So you were still having in-person interviews and everything? Yes. Was and that consistent across the state in your other two locations as well? Um, so we are part of, so the Nebraska Alliance um, essentially is kind of our, the main head office of the Nebraska CACs, but we all operate individually. So okay. um, um, we did have to shut down our, our satellite offices for a period um, just because we had fewer staff in the office. And so we weren't able to send our advocates and our interviewers to those locations. Um, so we were just trying to make sure that we had our main office open and running. And so we were still seeing kids from those areas. They just had okay. to travel to the Lincoln office, okay. uh, but those are open again and we are operating with all offices. Okay, great. Um, I'm glad to hear that. And I, of course, um, you know, our biggest concerns have also been people that are falling through the cracks and in a different way, but, um, when we're talking about um, abuse in the home, um, that has been a consistent uh, worry for a lot of us um, that are, you know, deal with pastoral care, I guess. Um, I've talked to folks at Voices of Hope, for yes. example, also, and, and we knew that, you know, the particular stresses of the pandemic um, was exacerbating some of that. And um, mm -hmm. I'm glad things are opening back up and that more kids are going back to school and mm -hmm. um, you'll you know, have an, an uptick so that you are identifying those kids now more than you were able to last year. Yeah, and you know, we know, again, we don't know the full extent of the damage that, this, that the pandemic has caused in this last year, um, but we do foresee that we'll continue to see children that were impacted during this time for probably- of course. Yeah, and the trauma from it, the just the ongoing trauma, um, we know will not um, will not end once things open back up for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I guess one of the other questions I have too is just, um, you know, as, are there things that are being planned for this year that you would want our members and friends to know about? Are there any events that you have coming up or or dates that you want us to keep in mind? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we do have, um, later in the year, we do have a couple of events that, um, that we hold each year, and we, we're still hoping to have those in person. Um, they're, they're more so fundraisers for us. Um, the one's called Harvest of Hope. It's going to be at the end of August this year, and the other one is Monster Dash, which is a family event. It's a 5K, one-mile fun run, and um, everyone that participates in that dresses up in their Halloween costumes, and they get to run through Rokeberry Farm. And that's and in October? That's that. Well, that one is usually in October. It will be in September of this year. Okay. And um, anyone that participates and runs in that event gets a free pass to Roca for the day to Roca Berry. So um, that's just a really good one for families to get involved in. And it's so cute to see the kids in their costumes. Um, yes, we would love to get more information <laughs> about both of those as as things come together. I know that you um, probably don't have details now. Um, but no, um, but I can certainly give that to you. Um, yeah, but the we'll other one I wanted to thoughts. mention that is um, just coming up in April. So it's a huge time for us. It's not necessarily 
an event. We do have some things going on, but April for us is National Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a nationally recognized time to bring more awareness to the problem of child abuse, to, you know, educate people on what that looks like, what do you do if someone discloses, ways to prevent it, um, how to respond. And so we do have several things going on throughout the month of April. Um, the first, I guess, kind of event that we have is Wear Blue Day is going to be on April 8th. I believe that's a Thursday. And that is just a day where we encourage everyone to wear blue, post about it, um, talk about it, invite others to do that as well. And just to say that, yes, I am going to be active in fighting against child abuse. I um, want to stand up for kids. I want to protect them. And the blue is just to help raise awareness for that. And so we are sharing all those on our social media, both our Instagram and our Facebook. And um, I will get you those addresses okay. as well. Great. Um, Great. And then we also have a we have a number of trainings that are going on throughout the month, just because again, like I said, we're wanting to raise awareness, we're wanting to educate um, and help prevent child abuse. And so we have those on our website that are available. Um, that is smallvoices.org. And it's also on our Facebook. So if you follow us on Facebook, which is also smallvoices.org, um, those will all be listed out there. They're all free. Most of them are virtual, but we do have a couple towards the end of the month that are in person because um, they're just, it's a more hands-on type of training. So okay. uh, those will be held in person. And then the last thing we're doing is on April 28th, we are doing what's called the lighting of the luminaries. And that will be a time for us to recognize survivors of child abuse. Um, it will be another in-person event. It will be at the Child Advocacy Center and um, it will be outside. So we will be able to socially distance, but we are going to be lighting luminaries to honor survivors. Um, and so those will be available for purchase if you want to recognize someone in your life that is a survivor, um, or if you just wanna support our cause and help help support survivors um, at the oh, CAC. So yes, we'll, we'll include some information about that too when we put this video out because um, those are the kinds of things that um, our members and friends really wanna know is how they can help um, of course, a lot of people will give money, um, you know, for the share the plate um, program. But in addition, often people want to know if there's ways they can volunteer or help. And all of the things you just mentioned are great ways, you know, just spreading the the word about the events and and also, um, you know, potentially attending one of the fundraisers, um, sharing information on social media. We know goes a long way to um, getting the word out so and we'll also be sharing several videos throughout the month um, that our staff are going to be creating so that again it's just educational um, it provides information and so that's that's something that we really enjoy doing we get a lot of engagement from and so as much as we can share those out as well and promote those um, it's really helpful because each adult that knows more about how to prevent or how to spot child abuse the more children we can protect. So it's, it's sure. very important that, that we educate the community on that. Now, are you, uh, this, uh, this just popped into my head, but um, as far as this um, concept of the trusted adults, um, are you, do you advocate for the teachers to use things like the posters or stickers that say safe space, or is there, uh, is there a specific uh, way that a child would identify a trusted adult. I mean, I believe that all of them, you know, probably know that their teachers and administrators at their school are those folks, but I'm just trying to figure out if there's a, there, if there's a corollary, you know, like the fire station, you know, we used to, as a kid, they always said, go to the fire station. Um, I know that our, our staff and our trainer does work with uh, school officials on ways to respond if a child discloses. Um, we also do communicate with parents that at, at, at a young age, you need to be talking with your children and helping them to identify those safe and trusted adults so that if they do need to tell somebody um, mm -hmm. that something has happened to them or if they have a concern, um, they know who they can go to. Okay. And yes, absolutely, teachers, we, we do, um, we rely on teachers so heavily because of the connection they have with their students. And so I know the schools have their own protocols and things that they do as far as 
communicating to kids what to do in the event that um, they're in a situation that makes them uncomfortable. Um, but we don't have uh, particular stickers or anything. Okay. Like that. I, I don't, that just popped into my head. Cause like I said, when I was little, it was always like the little red firehouse sticker that said, you know, safe space or something, yeah. something to that effect. But um, I was just curious. Um, so, well, you've really answered all my questions. I, I'm excited about all of the events that you um, have talked about that are coming up. I'm, I'm happy that we are able to be a part of the April uh, focus and, um, you know, we will try to raise a little money to help further the cause um, and get the word out. That would be wonderful. Yeah, again, like I said, there's so many ways you can help out, whether it be by donating, by volunteering your time, by participating in a training or coming to an event. I mean, just the more that we can spread awareness and the knowledge of what we do and um, that we're here and that we're here to help kids and how you can help kids, um, just the better off all the children in our communities will be. So I will get you all of that information, the websites, the links that you need, um, the details Great. about our events and yeah hopefully um, we can get you guys involved and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out to me I'd be more than happy to answer anything of course and thank you so much for your time today I really appreciate thank you, you taking all time out of your day it means so much to us it really does so thank you so much for having me you're welcome